represent in the world, and it doesn't represent all of them, an unengaged and unreached people group. An unengaged people group is a group that has either never heard of the gospel, sometimes we call them zeros, because there's absolutely no Christians there, but I had never or they've I thought heard, it was more but there's like, no ability. Okay, if you go to a rural area to plant a church, obviously you're maybe going to help them dig a well, if that's what they're doing that day. But I never thought about, you can go into these other fields and be a missionary there in these other fields. Hmm. So that was really cool to hear. Yeah, not just your traditional missionary. It's interesting, you look at ministry and you think, oh, people going into third world countries, but there's, there's so much more to it. Like, they had a, one of, they had a section of their uh, office dedicated to going on online games and just talking to people. And that kind of shocked me because I didn't think that was... Like the six, the circle, mm -hmm. about um, yeah. I mean, what you target on. or what people uh, target when they go to a different area, like church. Uh, it's just people family, just social things like that, like why they go to a different area. The food that they had there was really good. I remember your kind of hurt. That's nothing. <laughs> and then I remember going out back. Yeah, that was cool. They had Twitter, Facebook, whatever the heck people use these days. And they had like five or six people. I'm too wise for fortune cookies and horoscopes. I trust in the true God. But somehow, faith became superstition. The Bible, my crystal ball. Reading the scriptures like astrologers do the constellations, hoping to see a glimpse of my future. Praying the Lord reveal his will for my life. Cause if I make a right turn when I should have went left, who knows where I'll end up. And the person I was supposed to be will be wondering where I am. Who am I? And who is this God I thought I worship? Hoping in the cross like a four-leaf clover, but the Lord proved not to be a lucky charm. So what is true faith in the true God? My life is not what I thought it was, but I'm still not sure what it is. How did I get lost when I obeyed every instruction? This is not the journey I expected. I used to have dreams for my future, but I became so restless I couldn't sleep well enough to see them anymore. God knows what I'll become, and he's the only one who needs to. After being misguided for so long, I realized I didn't need clearer directions, but a better destination. I became a slave and pursued greatness, but my Lord said the greatest pursues servitude, and true worship extends beyond hymnals and pews. True faith works to love the ones it claims to save. It doesn't wait for future promises to be seen, but believes and labors for what it knows is coming. Peace. Blessed are the peacemakers. And that's something I'm capable of even now. Knowing I will be blessed as I trust God with the future I could never discern anyway. So I devote this moment to serving people and not my destiny. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yeah, it was nice after being in a vehicle for everyone. Get your hands dirty. Could have used a little more of that along the way, but that's was good. Okay, this is where we record. Oh, where we and record we got the day the tour. tour. Uh, so Jim Daly, the, the family, host. and then the, and the basic tour. Yeah, and then the really funny lady really? from the front desk gave okay. us like John the Fuller VIP tour. And she took us to the. Yeah, sit here. If you notice, yeah, there's we got like to here. go. Where this they is a great way for us to communicate with the sound booth. The producers back and forth without interrupting the guests partway through. Um, so, so we sat in there and I remember she made her like white and story sat in his chair or whatever, which is you're telling a story that has nothing to do with the <laughs> broadcast. 
I oh. <laughs> 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 so from Odyssey. Like that that was really cool because she showed us like all the different things. Like these are this guy's shoes. Like the sound when you hear him walking around. This is the shoes that he wears. And she's like pulling different things out. And then it was really good at giving us the rundown on how, how it all worked. Um, she even gave us some examples. She made us think more deeply into the like the sound effects and stuff like that, and how much work actually goes into making a certain sound, and how many they have to mix together to make a certain sound for a, a scene. Um, and then we went to the room where they do uh, the audio. And the guys, how they put it all together, take the voices and the sound effects and put it all together and they even add add in some stuff later from what they have in their database. Um, that was kind of cool. It's just like one giant room with the couch and, and uh, they had a couple of big almost TV like computers and it was just it was cool all they did. That. They gave us some DVDs that they worked on and their DVDs was had what we had listened to on his computer, so he gave us a couple of snippets of, of stuff that he had done for a part of one of the Adventures and Odyssey's audio stuff, and so he gave us the DVD afterwards. Hey, thanks for helping, Whit. Bob said he wanted everything of value sold and the money donated to the church. The whole Odyssey mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> you should have like? seen me and Lily. I turned away, I missed that. How are you like? You were like... <laughs> I'm doing it again. <laughs> I have always wanted to go there. Um, I'm a huge Odyssey fan, and so that was cool to, cool to see. Yeah, I was so jealous that she got the shirt and Zach got the shirt, and I didn't have enough money to get the shirt. I was like, oh, look at this! I remember this from the stories! And I bought a t-shirt in the gift shop. And then we found Narnia down there. We walk into a room, and then... It's like this big wooden frame that looks wardrobe. like yeah, it was, it was the wardrobe, and we walk through and we're like, we're just going to the store Focus on the family. That was fun. Focus on the family. I really, really enjoy focus on family, mostly just because, like, I got to see that because I was part of mobs when I was a little kid, and they and they were helping out mobs. Like, we were putting stuff together so then mom kids could they could do things, and I enjoyed focus on family too because it brought some competitive nature out of us to see who could do the most in the shortest amount of time and with the best quality. Can you explain what we were doing. We were like putting three or four feathers in, and and. Then we were then we had like pins, cheats, and everything. And I was the feather man, and the feathers. I was amazed about how many feathers that we go through. They uh, they were doing letters for mops, and so you have like a whole assembly line basically. And so you have to do about eight or nine different uh, papers and books, and put them all into an envelope in a certain order. And then you have to have the envelope, or they have to be like in the envelope certain way. And then you have to put the envelope in a stack of five, or you have to do five, 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 five. So it's twenty. And then. They, you put it in a stack, and then there's these people that sort out all these feathers, like this, which I only have this feather because I think somebody put it in my purse. But the feather, I found it. Yes, yeah, so it was like an assembly line. Everybody had a part. We got, how many did we get again? We got like almost a full crate of work, didn't we? I think it was like two weeks worth of stuff. Yeah, two weeks worth of work. We did it like four or five hours. Yeah, that was, I really enjoyed that. Like, I wouldn't mind leaving to do that for like another day just because I focused on family. It was really, really nice, and it was fun for everybody. So it's kind of a little bit like taking a drink of water from a fire hose and trying to <laughs> try to grasp all that. Do you have any questions on this? Glen Erie is, uh, they have a, it was uh, kind of next door to navigate. 16 minutes and 22 concepts we just briefly touched on. Three rock types. Again, checking your uh, memory. Three main rock types. Who remembers what they are? Sedimentary, igneous, and... Metamorphic. Metamorphic. Uh, what we did there was uh, we were given a tour uh, after a video about how uh, creation, using the flood for evidence for creation. Um, and uh, they get laid down very, very thick layers. We have places where they're 10,000 feet thick. So it's not just this many sheets of fun foam. It's a lot. 
But when they get laid down in uh, water, 99% What I thought was cool was an earth science teacher at a secular public school. Of evidence for a and foot uh, because we find this on had, all continents, uh, even Antarctica about, underneath you know, the ice caps. Time, when we drill uh, down, we find sedimentary uh, layers on top of the igneous or on top of the metamorphic. So there are sedimentary layers all over the globe. As a matter of fact, even in the highest uh, mountains of our, of and our world, the Himalayas, uh, for example, underneath the ice. But um, she always the knew which, you know, so who the Christians were in the crowd because as soon as evolution chapter came out, out popped the camp shirts. Uh, uh, thousands of feet above sea level now. I just have to have a cementing agent in the water. Okay, cementing agent. And then me and Steven were talking about how we would siege the castle. And um, as you know, as cementing agents go, and this is really just regular old glue, but this would be representative of what we would call wimpy glue. That would explain to you why in some places when we have rock layers that started out like this, and then something forces them up, and they're turned It's really critical. interesting to hear how some of them all the layers are going to erode away because they were made with wimpy glue. Like set down. How they were. Are going to stick up. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, because it was interesting to hear about it. So have you noticed around the world? Pretty persuasive. Yeah. Rocks sticking up out of she really ground. knew her stuff. They were originally about rocks. horizontal. Yes. They've been bent upward by the raising of the Rockies. Solid. And then they were able to re resist. That in itself <laughs> poses a problem. How do you get no, water deposited like... surface water? <laughs> Sitting right on. Uh, I was just smiling. Something had to be straight off for that deposition yeah, yeah. to occur. Okay. That, that the original, whatever was there, that separated. Yeah, she did. It was fun to. It's nice to be around people passionate that really know what they're talking about. Uh, and that they they give intelligence to a Christian world. They call that an uniformity. I think this one thing that uh, that lady and the paleontologist guy. Their and, formation uh, conditions were so like some of the ministries more of a local. I mean, at least I mean I know some ministry goes like, to London and, so and stuff, but that when you were there, it seemed more a local one. World Venture was more like an undercover to fill it more undercover. Right? The focus of the family was like the commercial hmm. the three. I don't remember regarding the gods much, but I don't know if we there was that that uh, visitor somewhere that we went to that was like that trophy. You all, the you old deer we saw. It's huge. Yeah. It's pretty tame, too. Hey, yeah. Well, <laughs> you can probably go up and knife it. <laughs>